Hello friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. This is episode number two in our performance testing must have skill series. In this video, we will continue to discuss the remaining module one concepts. In case you did not watch the part one video from this module, please watch that video first and continue thereafter. You can find the link of the part one video above and also in the description section. Let's start with the topics covered in this video. First, we will start by discussing different types of software testing. Then we will discuss functional testing, non-functional testing, and the different types of tests performed in each category. Also, we will look at the differences between functional and non-functional testing. Then we will discuss how testing will be conducted in each category. Finally, we will end this video with different phases in testing. So without any further delay, let's dive into it. So let's discuss different types of software testing. Basically, we have two types of software testing functional and non-functional testing. Again, functional testing can be classified into four categories, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Similarly, non-functional testing can be classified into four categories, performance testing, security testing, compatibility testing, and usability testing. So just to let you know that there are many types of testing, but I'm trying to make this series simple to help you to understand the required concepts in, in an easy manner. Now let's discuss the functional testing concepts. The phrase functional testing itself has the word functional it always tests what a product does. That means the testing focuses more on the functionalities of the software or an application. It will verify the functionalities of the software. It will ensure the system works as per the given functional requirements. In this testing, the functional teams will try to have discussion with business teams to understand the software functional requirements so that they can determine the required functionalities to be covered part of this testing. Now let's take an example of Gmail to understand more about the functional testing. Can you think of any functionalities of Gmail? Let's assume that we have four functionalities login, check mails, compose and send mails and delete mails. So in the login functionalities, what is our requirements? If we give the right username and password combination, the application should allow us to log in, right? What if if wrong combination was given? It should not allow the user to log in, isn't it? So in functional testing, we will verify if the login functionality is working as per our requirement. Similarly, in our check mails functionality, our requirement is to allow us to check the new mails or existing mails. In the case of compose and send mails, it should allow us to compose new mails and send it to our recipient, isn't it? Also, if you want to delete some junk mail, it should allow us to delete them, right? So in functional testing phase, we will validate whether all these functionalities are working as per requirements. I hope you got some idea about functional testing. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to mention it in the comment section. Now let's look at different types of functional testing. Basically, there are four types of functional testing, unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Now we will look at more about these testings. Let's start with unit testing. In this testing, the team will focus on the individual components. In our Gmail example, we have four functionalities, right? Each functionality will be developed separately. So in unit testing, each functionality will be tested separately to ensure that it is working as per the requirement. Mostly this type of testing will be performed by developers during their development phase. In general, this testing will follow the white box technique. In white box technique, the internal structure of our code of an application will be visible and accessible so that a developer can see where exactly the logic went wrong. So it will easily help them to fix the functional issues accordingly. As this testing is done during the development phase itself, the development team can identify any issues or bugs very early. So this will save a lot of time and effort. Now let's look at the next functional testing which is integration testing. In this testing, generally two or more modules or components of an application will be tested together as a one group. Let's say in our Gmail example, login and check mails are two different components. In integration testing, those two components were tested as a group. This will help the team to identify any integration issues between those two components. In general, the integration testing will be performed by functional testers during the testing phase. This type of testing will ensure that different integrated systems will work together very well without any issues. Next, let's look at the details of system testing. In this type of testing, complete application or system will be tested. So in our Gmail example, here we will be testing all the modules of the application as a whole system to understand if there are any issues. In general, sanity testing, smoke testing, end-to-end -end testing methodologies will be followed in system testing. So sanity testing means a quick check to validate if the new code changes are working properly without any new issues or bugs. This testing will be done against some specific functionalities. Smoke testing will ensure major functionalities are working as per the requirements. In case of end-to-end -end testing, it will ensure that software flow from start to finish is working as per the requirements. This type of testing will also be performed by this functional testers. This type of testing will definitely ensure the whole system is working as per the given requirements. Now let's look at the acceptance testing. In this type of testing, the application or software real-time 
scenarios will be tested. This type of testing is also called UAT testing, that is user acceptance testing. In general, this type of testing will be performed by clients, customers, or business users. So the clients accept the software only when all the features and functionalities are working as expected. This is the last phase of testing before the application software goes live or production. Once the application goes live, all the customers of the application will start using the application. If someone is saying that they are going live or going production means that they are releasing their application to the customers. With this, we have discussed different types of functional testing. Now let's discuss the non-functional testing. This is another type of testing which focuses on the non-functional aspects of an application or software such as performance, reliability, usability, etc. This testing will ensure that the system application is meeting all the non-functional requirements. Non-functional testing is concerned with how well the software system performs its function rather than what it does. Let's understand non-functional testing with some real-time example. Let's use the same Gmail example and as you know that we have four functionalities like login, check mails, compose and send mails and delete mails. In functional testing, our focus is on the functionalities of the Gmail. Whereas in non-functional testing, we will mostly focus on the non-functional aspect of the application. For example, how fast we are able to log in to the Gmail application? How long it is taking to load the inbox page where we can see all the emails? Is the application storing our credentials securely? Is the application user friendly to the users? All these aspects will be verified in the non-functional testing. Now let's look at different types of non-functional testing. There are four types of non-functional testing such as performance testing, security testing, compatibility testing and usability testing. Now we will look at more about these testings. Let's start with performance testing. This testing will assess the system performance in terms of speed, stability and scalability. That means how fast are we getting the response from the software or application? Are we seeing the stability issues in the application? Is the application scalable for future growth? All these aspects will be verified. So don't worry if you are not sure about these terms like stability, scalability. We will be discussing them in our module 4. This type of testing will be performed by performance testers or engineers. In a given project, the number of performances will be less comparison with functional testers because the performance testing is costly effort. Again, we will talk more about the performance testing core concepts in our module number 4. So performance testing will be conducted by applying the load onto the system. The performance will be captured at different load levels to assess the performance of the application. Here you can assume load means number of concurrent users or transactions volume. This module objective is to understand the software testing concepts. So that is why I am not going in depth into performance testing concepts. So let's stick to the objective for now. With the help of performance testing, we can identify any performance bottlenecks or issues in the system. Bottleneck is a term that performance testers will use for the issues that they identify during the testing. Now let's discuss security testing. So what is security testing? It's again a type of testing which aims to identify the potential flaws and weakness of the software system that could lead to a loss of data, revenue and reputation. In addition to that, it will ensure that only authorized or authenticated users are allowed to access the system. It will also ensure that all the personal information that will be stored in the system is secured. It will evaluate the system's ability to withstand any attacks from the malicious hackers. It will also ensure that the system meets the company's relevant security standards and regulations. So it is very crucial testing and there will not be any compromises with the results. Any deviation may severely impact the brand or image of the company. For example, we are using credit cards for online shopping. If our credit card information is not secure, there will be chance of misuse. If that happens, no one will trust this application and stop using it for online shopping. If we lose the customers, then we will have a lot of monetary losses, isn't it? That is why we need to make sure that all the security issues are addressed before we go in live. Now let's discuss about compatibility testing. So what are all the different things that we will do in compatibility testing? Do you have any idea? This is a type of testing which validates how software behaves and runs in different platforms or different configurations or different browsers. For example, is the software working in the same way in both Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or are we seeing any different behavior? This testing will ensure that the software or applications work across all the platforms correctly. It will also ensure the consistent experience and performance of the software on all different platforms. In general, in order to perform compatibility testing, the application should be stable. When we say stable, the application should not have any functional issues. In that way, we can differentiate the issues appropriately. Now let's discuss about usability testing. Usability tests will help us collect the actionable details to create better user experience to the customers of the application. In this testing, the application or software will be evaluated by the real users or customers. So this testing will reveal the pain points or confusion areas of the software. It will also help us identify the issues and improve the user experience. 
experience. It will definitely help you to gather the real feedback about the software. You don't need to depend on opinions from random people. The users are usually observed by researchers working for a business during either an in-person or more commonly a remote usability testing session. I hope you understand different types of non-functional testings. In case anything is not clear or require more information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. Now let's quickly look at the difference between functional testing and non-functional testing. Based on topics explained, can you think of any differences? Well, functional testing will primarily focus on the functional aspect of the application or software. Whereas non-functional testing primarily focus on non-functional aspects of the system such as reliability, performance, usability, compatibility, etc. Functional testing will be evaluated based on the customer requirements. However, non-functional testing will be evaluated based on the customer expectations. Functional testing will validate if the code is doing the right thing. Whereas non-functional validates if the code is doing the right way. In general, functional testing will be performed before non-functional testing and non-functional testing will be performed after functional testing. In order to assess the non-functional aspects, we need functionalities to be working as per the customer requirements. If the functionality itself is not working, then there is no point in validating the non-functional aspects. So before we start any non-functional testing, we should make sure that the application is functionally stable. I hope you got some clarity on the differences between functional testing and non-functional testing. Now let's discuss how this testing will be conducted by the teams. First, let's start with the functional testing. In functional testing, all the testing activities will be carried out in two ways, manual and automation. In the manual testing, the tester manually browse through all the functionalities of the software or an application and report all the bugs. In automation, the testing will be carried out using some tools. So in the automation testing, testers will set up framework and create test scripts that automate user action. Some of the commonly used automation tools are Selenium, Cucumber and Catalan Studio. Just to let you know that there are so many automation tools available in the market, but I just named few among them. Generally, teams will choose specific tool which meets their requirements and budget. Now let's talk about non-functional testing. Except usability testing, all the non-functional testing will be carried out using tools. For performance testing, team will use Loadrunner, Apache JMeter, Gatling, IBM Rational Performance Tester, etc. For security testing, teams will use SonarCube, Neuralink, Fortify, Black Duck, JetAttack proxy tools. For compatibility testing, team will use Browser Stack, Testing Bot, Lambda Test and Test Complete tools. In this series, we will be learning Apache JMeter performance testing tool in the module number 6. Now let's discuss about different testing phases. These are the common phases that all the testing teams will follow. Depending on the process in the company, there may be some additional phases. Just keep that in mind. Our first phase is requirement gathering. In this phase, all the testing requirements will be gathered and analyzed. In this phase, the scope of testing will be determined like the functionalities that will be tested and the functionalities that will be skipped. In general, the test manager or lead will gather all the necessary requirements. Second phase from the list is test planning. In this phase, all the gathered requirements will be documented. Along with that, the gathered requirements will be reviewed with the team so that the testing scope will be finalized. In the test planning phase, timelines for the testing and also the supportive resources information will also be finalized. Usually test manager or lead will conduct this phase. In the third phase which is test case or script development, the testers will develop the test cases or scripts for the in-scope functionalities. Along with the script development, they will also work on the test data setup activities. Generally test engineer will work on this phase. Fourth testing phase from our list is environment setup. In this phase, teams will closely work with infrastructure teams to set up the environment which is closely simulate the conditions of the production environment. This will validate all the connectivity with the downstream systems or vendor environments. Once the environment setup is done, Teams will do quick sanity tests to make sure the functionalities are working as expected. After the environment setup, team will start the test execution phase. In this phase, test cases or scripts will be executed and the results will be shared with the project teams. Any issues will be tracked using defect management tool like Jira. Once the issue has been fixed, they will be retested to make sure that they are working as expected. The final testing phase is test closure. In this phase, testers will prepare the closure report with all the findings. They will also ensure that all the project deliverables are delivered. In addition to that, in case of any lesson learned, they will document for future references. Finally, all the documents will be uploaded in the shared location for future references. With the testing closure phase, the testing activities for the project will be completed. That's it for this video. With this, we have completed all the planned concepts for software testing module. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understand all the concepts in this part 2 video. In case any specific concept is not clear or require more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. You your feedback will definitely help me deliver the quality content in our channel. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing it and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you in our module 2 video. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.